What's up nerds, welcome back to the channel. Today we are fishing the cheapest things I could find at Dick's Sporting Goods, all in. So we got a combo and we got some baits and they were all under 50 bucks altogether added up, right? So very inexpensive setup. The most expensive part was the combo, which was $35, which means I spent about 15 bucks on baits. So let's see if these baits actually work. So we're gonna challenge ourselves today and try and catch fish on all these baits. At the very least, I think you'll get a good review or a good idea of how these baits fish. They are very inexpensive. So once you see this, maybe it opens your eyes to these baits or maybe it tells you why you haven't bought them in the first place. I don't know. Let's find out if they're just cheap pieces of junk or if they actually work. Before we do that, if you guys like this kind of content, be sure to subscribe, smash a like, ring that notification bell, and then come back Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern when we go live it's a blast love to see you there and talk to you in chat all right so let's get into what the heck did i buy for very little money at dick sporting goods all right so let's first start out with the combo so we have the proficiency now we saw these guys down at icast last year and i was very intrigued so this is a very inexpensive spinning setup 35 dollars. you got line you got reel you got graffiti af like paintball-esque graphics i don't know kind of weird um it's actually a two-piece just like that um two-piece section looks honestly kind of super cheap but i think it'll hold up plenty fine for what we're fishing today this is the five foot six inch micro spinning combo check it out so we got a little micro spinner with a colorado blade we got a little rooster tail-esque inline spinner there as well is designed for crappie bass bluegill trout blah 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 this one's an eighth of an ounce and this one is a 1 16th ounce um overall took a got a good feel for the rod in store i was like okay seems like it'll hold up well even though it's a two-piece um if it holds up really well this could just live in my truck full time see i haven't even taken off like this stuff yet so let's do that trash days in boat don't worry guys these little like stock setups it's like there's a seam there but there's no way to get it off. Obviously, you don't want to use a knife. Oh wait, here's like a tab? Is this a tab? Seems kind of tabby. This is the hardest part of this challenge. Oh my God, I did it. I am the winner. This little back pond is not a bad place to start. Got lots of bluegill. And uh, these little micro baits are pretty good for that. <sighs> so far, so bad. So we got our Whatever quality six pound test line here. And go ahead and take this piece off. So we got these two baits to play with. And we went from a zero wind day to uh, an extremely windy day. So we're gonna do the best we can with micro baits. <laughs> Probably not gonna be easy. Six guides on this baby, all lined with just plastic. I mean, it's $35 setup, so, you know, makes sense. At the end of the day though, you've got pre-spooled line, got your reel, got everything you need. So in this back pond, because I got the gillies, I'm gonna start out with these two little guys here. So let me try the spinner bait first. And we got a light setup, six pound test. I mean, it's gonna be awesome if we hook into something bigger. Uh, there we go. So this is an interesting little spinner bait. You got a Colorado blade there. It's one uh, 16th of an ounce. It's very light, little tiny jig head. Now, that's not all we got. We did also get these Jawbone lures. So Jawbone is a brand you guys should know if you've been to a Dick Sporting Goods. Uh, very cheap. These packs right here are like three bucks. You get uh, five pre-rigged tube jigs. These are great for crappie and bluegill. So we got the Pearl Chartreuse. I'm, I'm banking on that color, but also pink and white. Pretty great color to go with. So I think these will both do well. I had to get this one. This looks like absolute trash. So $3.99. 2.25 inch craw crank chartreuse and black i mean it's just kind of absurd so we're gonna see how that baby works um a little bit heavy for the setup we're running today but a little half ounce chartreuse and white spinner bait two willow blades there both in silver good when the sun's out today we got a popper now i just filmed a video uh on the monster bass regional box and top water was working so i'm feeling pretty good about this black top water. And I've got a good spot we're gonna fish it soon as well. So that's definitely happening. And then of course I got a jerk bait. Why wouldn't you? I had to see if this was gonna do any damage at all. So little baby jerk bait here, pretty heckin' loud, sharp hooks. I mean, definitely you can see like the soldering points and stuff in them, so cheaper hooks, but 
Nice natural color. I think it'll do well today. Yo, look at this thing. I can see a lot of problems with this thing probably going down with these claws. Probably gonna get caught up on those trebles. And then we got the uh, crappie jigs. I mean, that's like, that's a decent amount of stuff. The jerk bait, top water popper, crank bait, spinner bait. Got this inline spinner, black and silver that came with the proficiency kit. And then we got this little guy. It's definitely enough to do some damage. Let's see, okay, very, very whippy rod which is probably like one of my least favorite things in the world when that rod just like reverbs on the cast. Not fun, not ideal. I got it out there, look at me go. A little spinner bait in the wind, always a good option. Oh, just got swiped by a ghillie. Almost had him, <laughs> didn't even have to do anything. There we go. I'll get the hang of the casting of this thing. Got him. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> oh my god. It's too big for this line. <laughs> well, here's one bait down. <laughs> oh my gosh. Corner of the mouth. Got a little bass on it. All right. Well, I'd say that's a pretty good start. Don't you? Let's try another bait. Look, he just unfolded this, this spinner bait. All right. Next bait. <laughs> Okay, so the next one I'm gonna do is the, uh, the little rooster tail guy. Here we go, bait number two. This is actually like an old reliable bait for me. These baits are great. I mean, again, watch the rod tip on this cast, you guys. This, this is the main thing that I worry about with uh, cheaper light rods. You see that reverb where it's just like wing, 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 wing. That's not ideal. Like you can get a really finessey rod that doesn't do that. It's like a spring, like those door springs. <laughs> All right, so this bait's looking good, running pretty darn well for a basically free inline spinner. I like their little slogan, find the pro in you. Um, gear ratio, it's a five, two to one, pretty standard spinning. And uh, I will say this, the spinning reel has this little notch here for a child stinger. So if you wanna pick this up for one of your kids, I think it's great. This is not ideal for big fat adult fingers like mine. I would have liked, check this out. This lower guide needs to be a little bit lower down. You can see how much it's moving that line. It's not ideal. Not what you want to see. Got that one. Gilly. Counts. Touch the boat. Ooh, nice little gilly. Nice little gilly. Look at that water spray. Little squirt gunners. These guys, ow, ow, there we go. Look at that, straight through the whole mouth. Get it out, there we go. Got a ghillie, let's change baits. Look at us flying through this gosh dang thing. Let's move to something fun for today. Let's try this top water out. Feeling this, love a nice black or bone colored top waters. Now I've been fishing bone top waters this morning. All Mostly I was fishing this KVD Sexy Dog. So I have a feeling this Jawbone Popper is gonna feel a little bit different as compared to a KVD Sexy Dog, but I don't you know, who am I to say? If it floats, that's at least a really good start. Really tough to work with this rod, but oof, because all the stretch, you got six pound mono, you got a whippy rod. Doesn't really walk much at all. There's no split ring. You might wanna add a split ring or do a loop knot. But I mean, we do have mono. And I feel like I'll do it a little bit lighter if I stay seated. Like up by this tree. Oh, got him, got him. <laughs> oh no, oh no. It's a bluegill on top water. <laughs> oh my God, sunny, sunny. Bright orange belly, sun belly sunny. Okay, please don't. Yo, as soon as it hit the water. Nice. Well, there we go, another bait down. <laughs> okay, what should we do next? <laughs> I've been doing this challenge for like 15 minutes. 10 of which was fixing my line. So, I don't wanna just lose this in the water. I don't think that's fair. So I'm gonna fish this on a different setup. I don't wanna be a fool. I'm gonna fish L weird Cranko bait here. 
on the light setup. I'm gonna throw the spinner bait on my go-to spinner bait setup here. We'll lose tournament MP custom speed stick. This way we're not just littering for a challenge. Now just kind of first looks at this spinner bait, I'm gonna be honest, it's actually hand tied, you guys. That skirt is tied on there pretty well. There's a super flimsy wire, very cheap blades that like instantly rust, but the hook is very sharp and it's uh, tied on skirt, not bad. All right, it's cutting through the water really fast. Blades are spinning, I mean, that's a plus, right? Got him. Little guy. Maybe? No, lost him. Is he on there? No, he's so little. <laughs> he just turned into it. Oh, actually, get in here. Not bad, not bad, not bad, not bad. Oh my gosh. She must have been running with it. Yo, fish of the challenge right there. Actually, this is fish of the day from everything I've been fishing today. Oh, that's a nice fish. That is a nice fish. So they're back. That is fish of the day. So she came out right here. Let's put her right back where we found her. See you, bud. Well, there you go. That is uh, generally how fish in a spinnerbait should go. Let's take a look. After one big catch, not, not too bad. I mean, held up. I'm surprised. I am surprised. But you know what that means. It is time to go ahead and throw this, probably what's gonna be like the most difficult bait to catch on today, a crawl crank. And the claw is already tangled. Okay, so everything is, everything is working. Let's see how she looks in the water. I'm in 10 feet depth, so I got plenty of room to crank bait. Oh my God, it's, it's rolling sideways already. Come on, buddy, you can do this. I, be I believe in you. There we go. Okay, now it's working. Just a, a fun little craw going, oh no, don't eat me. This one's gonna be impossible. It just keeps getting tangled up. Okay, I think I found a trick. So if it gets tangled up, you just pause. It like detangles itself with the help of the water. This crankbait sinks. So that's, that's something to know. That is a sinking crankbait. I guess it makes sense. Being that it's a craw, you wanna run it on the bottom. Again, this is not the ideal place for that. The biggest problem with this is that it has too many moving parts. Like, you got two trebles, two of these arms. Ugh, it's just not an ideal bait. Easily my least favorite of the bunch we bought. Let's try this like rocky point here. This could be good. Yep, got it. Got it. <laughs> Counts. It's an ultralight setup. Bluegills count for sure. For sure, dude. Here we go. Boop. Caught on it. <laughs> All right, let's toss on that jerk bait. First thing I like to know with the jerk bait is does it float or sink? This is a floating jerk bait. Okay, should be good. Let's see how it twitches. I mean, it's got a little bit of a twitch, not much action at all. Kind of a nice color for an overcast day though. I'll take it. We're gonna give this jerk bait every opportunity it can possibly have to succeed, just like we did the spinner bait. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this on my go-to jerk bait setup, which is right behind me. Blue gilt. Nope, baby bass. Real baby bass. Look at the bend on this baby bass though. Look at that. There we go. Little guy. Another little guy for the road. There we go. Okay. Okay. Two fish. I mean, I'm talking trash about this top water and it's trying to change my mind. I mean, it's not total garbage. <laughs> it's just not great. Maybe if I added a split ring to it, but I'm trying to fish these as is. You know, as if you guys got it out of the box from the store. Of course, you could throw a split ring on it from owner that's worth more than this entire bait. Sure, 
sure, and you could upgrade the trebles too. And you could take a two cent body bait and make it worth 20 bucks. You could do that with anything. But why not just buy a better stock bait? God, dude, couldn't even tell that he had it for a second there. Holy cow. He's fighting it hard. Okay. There we go. Another on top. There we go. Whatever. Got him out. There we go. All right. Later, bud. Get on back. It's funny that this turns out to be the nightmare. I mean, it's, I'm just used to, like, way better jerk baits. Usually don't have any trouble with jerk bait fishing. Like this. Got him. Got him. Not bad. Not bad. There we go. Just kidding. He was side hooked, so he felt way bigger. You guys saw that rod bend, right? Oh, I'm so dead. I'm so dead. Give me a, give me a lip. Give me a, oh, you're free. Good job. Scoop him. Later, bud. Surprisingly, this became like my least favorite bait. This thing is not good. <laughs> Last up on the Dick Sporting Goods Jawbone Tour is the El Crappie Tubo. Uh, this is probably actually weighing like 1 32nd of an ounce slash super light. Okay. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to get up on this dock and I'm going to fish this wood line down to that log. Try and knock out these last two baits and we call this challenge a win. While I'm doing that, wouldn't be a bad time to, I don't know, smash that like and subscribe. Super slow, ultralight, tube fishing. Huzzah! Just letting it slow fall until it hits the bottom, pop it up, rinse and repeat. That's pretty much how we're going to fish these. We got white and chartreuse and then pink and white. One of those is going to work. Oh, got him. Bass. You guys hear the grinding of this rod though? Or this reel? Oh my gosh. It's fighting that light really well. There we go. Splashed everything. <laughs> Not a bad little bass. Not a bad little bass on the crappie tube. Let's do that again. That was fun. Got him. There we go. Fishy. All right. Bye. On. Bass. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Look at this rod. Look at this rod. Oh my gosh. There we go. And now we get a bass. Look at that. This is the most fun you can have for almost free 99. Crappie. And multi-species. <laughs> three fish and a little over three casts that are three different species all on the same tube. Gotta love it. I wanna throw the pink one for a minute. Pretty fun fight, especially when you get a bass on this rig. Try and catch just a couple fish on this pink. And we're gonna call it a day. Got him. There we go. Decent little ghillie. Oh, real decent ghillie. There we go. There we go. Gotcha. Boom. All right. All baits have been caught on. Whew. Instantly. Instantly now. Ooh. Another decent ghill. There we go. All right. All right, guys, that is a wrap on the Dick Sporting Goods cheap special $50 that included about $15 plus, you know, just a little bit over in jawbone baits, as well as the proficiency combo, which was $34.99. So start with the combo uh, right off the bat. You get line, you get a reel, you get a rod. It's a two piece, easy travel. Looks pretty cool. A little paintball splatter all over it. Um, beyond that though, it's got the cheap foam, which feels terrible, has like no grip. Once you get fish slime on it like this, it just doesn't work nearly as well. It's slimed all the way up and down. Uh, not a fan of this foam, but that's what you get with cheap combos, you know? The tip was like really whippy, which made it difficult to make more accurate casts, I would say, with lighter 
baits. Once you got into the quarter ounce or heavier, it's like pretty easy to cast it up. The other problem we had is there's still a lot of line memory on this. So if you get a pre-rigged combo like this, I would take this spool off, soak it in warm water, see if you can get rid of the memory of that line. It is monofilament. Um, if not, just re-rig it with your own line. Line's not that expensive. You do get the whole combo kind of set up. This little trigger finger thing here, that knob is super annoying. So if you're a child, which is a, who I'm assuming this is for, and I'm gonna give it to my daughter actually, my, my eldest daughter will probably like this, um, then it's probably easier to deal with. For me, very uncomfortable to fish with it, especially when I got into like decent sized bass. And decent size for this rig, I'd say like 1.5 pounds. <laughs> These crappie tubes are what we ended out on and they absolutely smacked them. Cause I mean, I kind of figured that ultralight definitely works really well on this lake. As far as the rest of the baits go, this was easily the most disappointing. So it's jerkbait, but I mean, when you spend like, I think it was $3.99 on a jerkbait, that's kind of what you're gonna get. The action is trash, it kind of floats. Um, very loud, did get one catch and a nice swipe on it. So I mean, it's not that it won't catch fish, it's just that you're gonna be kind of upset fishing it, in my opinion. This popper's action was terrible, but it caught a lot of fish, uh, probably Eh, what do we boat like five of these five fish on this or something like that i mean you can't go wrong with the black top water with a white trailer there these are fantastic um the hooks are not great on any of these so you might want to switch out the trebles but at that point with the amount of money you're spending on split rings trebles blah 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 you might as well just get a better popper right there's way better poppers out there but for the money i think it's 2.99 or 3.99 i mean it's it is what it is it's not that bad i think the ozark trail popper was better so if you're gonna spend a small amount of money on a popper, get the Ozark instead. The next two baits came with a proficiency rig. So we had the little inline spinner and it's not bad, it's not bad. It holds up pretty well. It's got a decent amount of heft to it. It's an eighth of an ounce, but it casts really well. It was difficult to get the blade spinning accurately for 25% of the cast, but the rest of the time worked really well. I mean, it performed as needed. It's got a little micro treble on there. It catches fish. That is, that is a legendary fish catching bait. Easiest catch came on this guy. It was like second cast. Uh, pretty cool little rig. Little tiny Colorado blade. I've got a few of these. This is the smallest, lightest one that I own now. And I like it. I mean, it's not bad for what it is. You can tell by the jig head there. It's very cheaply made, but it does the job. The worst one by far, which was obviously going to be terrible, but I knew I had to pick up for your sake and my sake was this guy, the little craw, right? These arms get stuck on this treble very easily. This treble is too long. It gets stuck on the lip of the bait. It dives a lot deeper, it sinks. So if you you know cast it out wherever you're going, if you're going shallow, make sure it's rocky. If you got any grass or anything like that, it's not gonna work very well. I'm sure it works great in the river and I'm gonna have to retest it there. But all in all, cheap feel, cheap look. Not very good action at all. And then the spinner bait was actually surprising. So for how cheap the spinner bait is, I mean, I'm sure these blades are not gonna last longer than a couple of weeks in the water. Like they're gonna rust over right off the bat. Uh, the wire is pretty flimsy. So if you're catching anything bigger than two pounds, this is probably not a go-to. It's a half ounce. It is surprisingly hand tied, but lightly hand tied at that. It's like a couple times around. So I don't know after, I don't know, maybe a dozen or so catches how that's gonna hold up but for today it did the job and uh it was pretty fun to fish it worked it worked well enough so that was all the baits so there you go i mean i grabbed like a handful of everything i could off the jawbone rack over at the exporting goods so if you're looking for cheap lures understand that cheap lures come with frustrating action if you're just getting into it and you just don't want to spend a lot of money or you don't have a lot of money to spend i don't think there's anything wrong with it i've had a little more success with the Ozark baits. And if you want to watch that, I'll include the link to that video in the description and probably like up here somewhere, but go check out our Ozark trail review video. I would love to check out some of the higher end proficiency combos. So if you guys know of any uh, that we should check out that you've maybe used or if you heard are really good, let us know and we'll look into them. I know they got like some really fancy looking ones. I don't know if they're good or not though. So maybe, maybe we take a deep dive on that, but hey, thanks for being along for this challenge. It was fun, caught fish on everything. It's been a good day on the water. I'm very happy. Lots of top water hits today, even in another video that I filmed before filming this one. So thanks for coming along. If you guys like the content, be sure to subscribe, smash the like, ring that notification bell, and then come back Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern, we go live. It's a blast, and I'd love to see you there and talk to you in chat. Time to get back home for dinner, so I'll see you guys on the next video.